From our Chicago studios, this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum. I am Samana Siddiqui. Our top story tonight. Senate Banking Committee Chairman Sherrod Brown says that cutting jobs or wages in the name of fighting inflation is not a good idea. According to investigative news website Politico, the first 14 months of the Biden administration and the last 10 months of the Trump era had brought rapid wage growth. But since then, both wage and price growth have cooled in the wake of aggressive rate hikes by the Fed. Pandemic-era spending had injected trillions of dollars into the economy. That spurred consumer spending and had put workers in very high demand. Experts believe that the resulting slowdown will hurt low-wage workers disproportionately. Economists at the Federal Reserve have predicted a mild recession later this year. Environmentalists have criticized the Biden administration's plan to approve the Planet Heating Mountain Valley Pipeline project. They say it could potentially cause an imbalance in local ecology. The pipeline would run from West Virginia to Southern Virginia. In exchange for an increase in the arbitrary debt limit, Biden approved the pipeline and accepted a plan to gut the National Environmental Policy Act. Peter Anderson is the Virginia Policy Director for Appalachian Voices. He said suspending regulations for a pipeline company amounts to denying justice to communities along the pipeline route. The project had previously been denied court approval several times because of concerns about its impact on water quality. This pipeline is expected to emit more than 89 million metric tons of carbon, the equivalent of emissions from 26 coal-fired power plants. More than 100 people greeted Jacob Chansley on Sunday after he was released from federal prison. The 35-year-old, also known as Jake Angeli, or the QAnon shaman, was convicted of attacking the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. He was pictured walking through the U.S. Capitol that day wearing a headdress made of bison horns. At Reformed Living Bible Church in Scottsdale, Arizona, he signed autographs on mugshots and T-shirts as people lined up to greet him. Chansley was sentenced to 41 months in prison in November 2021 after pleading guilty. He was transferred to a halfway house and released last week. Prosecutors say that while he did not commit any violent acts, he played an effective role in encouraging others to storm the Capitol. In his speech on Sunday, Chansley said he grew closer to God during his time in prison. He also spoke out against divisive propaganda. He said Americans need to figure out what they can agree on and rebuild their nation based on those shared values. Using artificial intelligence, scientists have succeeded in developing a new antibiotic to treat the world's most drug-resistant microbe. The bacterium Acinetobacter bomani has been described as notoriously difficult to eradicate. It causes infections in vulnerable hospital patients, such as premature babies and people with weakened immune systems. These can lead to potentially fatal pneumonia, sepsis and meningitis. But Canadian and U.S. scientists used artificial intelligence tools to identify an antibiotic molecule that can kill these bacteria. According to a study published in the science journal Nature Chemical Biology, scientists from McMaster University and MIT were able to identify a new antibacterial compound, which they named Abokin. Abokin has proven its effectiveness in experiments on mice with infected wounds and bacterial cells grown in the lab. It targets only the harmful microbes and spares those that are beneficial to the human body. It is also less likely to develop drug resistance. Researchers say that this finding has validated the benefits of artificial intelligence in discovering new antibiotics at a reduced cost and at faster rates. The U.S. government has approved the vaccination of the critically endangered California condor against avian flu. The condor is a member of the vulture family and was declared endangered in 1987. Officials said the decision to vaccinate the condors does not mean they will also vaccinate the poultry population. The HPAI strain, currently spreading first infected birds in China in 1996. Since late 2021, there have been outbreaks throughout the summer in a record number of bird species, as well as mammals. Samantha Gibbs, a wildlife veterinarian, said H5N1 has killed birds before, but never on the scale it is now in North America and Europe. H5N1 can infect humans, but cases are rare and usually result from close contact with infected poultry. Russia has placed U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham on its wanted list. Angered by his remarks during a meeting with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, Russia said it had opened a criminal case against Graham. During a meeting with Zelensky in Kyiv on Friday, Graham was recorded in a video saying, the Russians are dying, the best money we have ever spent. A Kremlin spokesman said it was a shame for the U.S. to have such senators. According to the state news agency TASS, Moscow called his remarks Russophobic. It also said investigators from the Russian Investigative Committee would evaluate the case in a legally sound manner. 
The OIC calls for a lasting solution to the Rohingya crisis. Details after the break, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or OIC, has called for a permanent solution to the Rohingya crisis. Secretary General Hussein Brahim Taha said Monday that the 57-member coalition supports the genocide case against the military junta in Burma. The case was filed by the African Muslim state of the Gambia in the International Court of Justice. During a visit to Rohingya refugee camps in Bangladesh, Taha said the OIC is working diplomatically for the safe repatriation of the Rohingya to their homeland of Burma. Rohingya community leaders called on the OIC to exert appropriate pressure on the Burmese government to return their citizenship. Currently, Bangladesh is hosting more than 1.2 million Rohingya in 33 overcrowded camps in Cox's Bazar. An Indian court will hear the government's request for the death penalty against Kashmiri leader Muhammad Yasin Malik on August 9th. Last week, India's National Investigation Agency approached the Delhi High Court seeking the death sentence for the leader, who is currently serving a life sentence. Malik is chairman of the Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front, which calls for the liberation of the former state of Jammu and Kashmir from both India and Pakistan. The move has been criticized by many political leaders in Indian administered Jammu and Kashmir, including a former chief minister. Last year, a court sentenced Malik to life in prison in a terror financing case. The court had rejected the NIA's plea for the death penalty. Malik has been imprisoned in Delhi's Tihar jail since 2019, along with several other senior leaders and activists campaigning for freedom. India banned the Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front in 2019. Israeli soldiers killed a Palestinian security officer and injured seven others during a raid in the West Bank on Monday. According to the Palestinian news agency Wafa, Israeli forces moved into the city of Jenin early Monday. The officer was injured in the violence and later died of his wounds. According to witnesses, Israeli soldiers prevented ambulances from taking the injured to the hospital for medical attention. Israeli forces also raided the city of Nablus. The Palestinian Red Crescent Society said 15 Palestinians suffered temporary asphyxiation from tear gas canisters. Tensions have been running high across the occupied West Bank in recent months amid repeated Israeli raids into Palestinian towns. According to Palestinian figures, Israeli soldiers have killed around 155 Palestinians since the start of this year. At least 20 Israelis have also been killed in separate attacks during the same period. Two Iranian border guards and a Taliban fighter were killed after an exchange of fire at the border of Iran and Afghanistan. Clashes had erupted between the two countries on May 27th, reportedly over water rights. Residents of Afghanistan's border province, Nimroz, claimed that the clashes erupted after the Iranian military opened fire. The Taliban-controlled government's defense ministry blamed Iranian soldiers for firing on its forces in the border area of Kang district in Nimroz province. The ministry said on Twitter that it was in neither side's interest to find excuses to start a war and take negative action. Residents called on the two sides to resolve the existing problems through negotiations. Iran's RNA news agency reported that two Iranian guards were killed and two civilians. At least one Spanish citizen converts to Islam almost every Friday in the southern Spanish region of Andalusia. The president of the Spanish Islamic Society, Omar del Pozo, said that in recent years they have been receiving one person almost every Friday who wants to convert. Del Pozo, who also heads the Granada Grand Mosque Foundation, said that of the 36,000 Muslims living in Granada, 3,700 are converted Spaniards. The secretary of the Islamic Commission of Spain, Mohamed Ajana, said that the Muslim population in Spain has increased tenfold in the last 30 years. According to official figures, the country's Muslim population exceeds 2.5 million. The immigrant Muslim population lives mainly in industrialized regions such as Catalonia, Valencia, Andalusia and Madrid. Hundreds of Muslims have reportedly clashed with Chinese police in the southwestern province of Yunnan to protest the demolition of a mosque's dome. Videos on social media showed a scuffle breaking out between police and locals outside the 13th century Najiaying Mosque in the city of Nagu on Saturday. According to media reports, local Muslims had expanded the historic mosque and added a new domed roof. However, authorities cited a 2020 court ruling and ordered the expanded portion to be removed. Dozens of police in riot gear are seen beating back a crowd pushing toward the gate of the Najiaying Mosque. Footage also showed police threatening residents who had staged a sit-in outside the mosque gate. According to the BBC, police in Tonghai district, where Nagu is located, issued a statement Sunday calling on protesters to surrender to police by June 6. So far, dozens have been detained. Yunnan is home to about 700,000 of China's roughly 10 million Hui Muslims. 
Before we end today's news, I'd like to make a special request. It takes our team a combined 55 hours of work daily to produce this news for you. It is news with a unique perspective, and you'll find it only here. Sound Vision is a not-for-profit organization which produces it, and just like PBS and NPR, it depends on your donations. Please visit MuslimNetwork.tv to donate now, or click on the link below to donate. Thank you. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.